City recording. Yes, it actually worked again. Here's the guy with the big orange hands and the beard again. Hello. I know I'm not quite in the frame, but that's totally fine. It's more than enough if my beard represents me. This here is a Baikal MP from Mother Russia. Let's get started with the usual. This is the matching target for it. You know, 20 shots from a seated position. Unfortunately, there's no coin at 10 meters. Cover the grouping for me. But you can easily cover this grouping with a $200 bill. That's already a good sign. Yes, so it shoots. How does it shoot? Let's just take a look here. Better. This way. The lowest shot I took from these 20 was at 4.3 joules. And the hottest shot was at 5.1 joules. Yeah, that's just how it is. It's not the hottest trick on this planet. That 10 meters, it doesn't matter to a paper target whether it's 4 joules, 5, 6, 7, uh, whatever. That'll be interesting at greater distances or when you want to take things apart. Anyway, that's more than enough for having fun. This is actually meant to be a blinking trick, even though it shoots quite well for a blinking one. Because I have to say, I've seen worse. I've seen much worse, even for more money. Speaking of money, of course I shot it at e-setting, and I spent 56 euros on gold-rimmed parts, including the scope. Yes. This shotgun is also known as the air rifle from Notre Dame. Completely with a hump. The previous owner has already unscrewed the hump here. Normally this whole thing is that big, like a lump for sight elevation for the rear sight. Same thing up here. Luckily he already took it off up front. That would be another one. If you want to see this thing in all its ugliness, just check out some pictures on Google or YouTube. There are a few other videos of this. I have a feeling that half of them are paid, and they never really say what they think because they have to sell the things. There are a few other videos of this. I have this feeling that one half gets paid, and they never really say what they think because they have to sell the stuff. And the other half basically shows themselves shooting at cans and thinks that's a test. Anyway, I'm not doing a test either. I'm saying I'll take a quick look at this thing. I'll take a quick look at it. This is a brake barrel, a brake barrel rifle. What is there really to say about that? Here we have the usual labeling. MP 4.5 meter. With a really long serial number. The whole thing is laser etched. Normally I would have said, all right, this thing comes from China. But it clearly says made in Russia, along with the Baikal logo. The question is, is that true now? That's an interesting question overall. Whatever. I can maybe say something about the scope now, because it was often sold with this scope. It says Luger on it, big and loud. It also says Luger underneath. A 4x2 and 30, but the mark is pointing straight down, and I really don't feel like twisting anything. 2001. This thing has obviously never seen the inside of any Luger factory. Those are just Chinese goods, and the Luger name belongs to, I don't know, Umarex or GSG, and it's just slapped on there. Done. Otherwise, like I said, it's a brake barrel rifle, and the ugliest parts have already been unscrewed. Then I'll continue with this. What is that? I don't know that either. I'll hold it up for you. That was attached. The previous owner didn't know either. He bought it like this. We we're just guessing about it. Maybe someone thought they absolutely needed a iPod, and that's why they have this weird screw thing for it. Interestingly, the whole thing is welded, so I can't just quickly unscrew it. It's welded. I don't know what it's welded to yet. For that, I'll have to take off the stock at some point. That could be some kind of metal support inside here because this whole thing can fold down without being obstructed by this thing. 2001. You can already tell. There's a lot happening acoustically when you cock the good piece. We'll also do trigger right away. That's another thing in itself. The trigger guard is a molded part made of plastic. It's specially machined to fit. So, it's not the part itself, but the wooden stock that's machined so that the part can be properly recessed. And the wooden stock is also stained here. Well, where you can see a bit of the wall, that's not always the case with the Chinese. Sometimes you can see the light wood, the untreated wood, shimmering. There are also no gaps on the right and left, like I've seen often from China. The trigger is made of metal. I would say it's completely... Uh, metal, so no plastic. I don't see any adjustment options, but there is an automatic safety. 
This is the point where I usually break when I hear automatic safety. This one has a special, particularly nice feature. Someone in Russia, a gifted weapon designer, came up with the idea that the perfect way to disengage a trigger safety is to pull it towards the trigger. It actually has to be pulled towards the trigger. You can see how small it is. So I'm just going to do it now. No, it's not as hard to cock as you sometimes hear in the videos. I think the thing cocks pretty normally. Not a super lightweight. Also here, there's bare metal. The rubber ring sits inside on the side. So it's not just metal on metal. So, first we're going to talk about the safety. You can see it's positioned nice and far forward. I'm now going to touch the safety with my finger. 2001. It hardly moves. You just hear a clicking sound. So you have a kind of slider that makes a click sound and, you know, uh, now it's safe, but something happens there without the thing moving much. You can do even better. If I now place my finger on the trigger, yes, I have a bullet trap set up. And this thing pokes me in the finger from above. So that means I can't pull the trigger without this thing from above pushing my trigger finger down. So a gifted Russian designer has also made his mark there. I'm going to shoot a little pellet into the bullet trap. Lead heavy trigger. Yeah. The trigger is relatively hard, but without any pressure point trigger. That means you pull and pull and pull. Bang. It doesn't scratch. So it's not a scratchy trigger where you have to guess at the end, at the back, whether there's a pressure point you can feel. Rather, the trigger is completely free of any creaking, but also free of any pressure point. At some point, it just goes bang. It's not as bad as other prints. I've had worse ones that really scratch, 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 and at some point it might go bang or it might not. That's not the case here. So it's okay, it's not great, it's not pretty, but it's fine. The recoil was noticeable. You already heard it, I've told you, done and all that. Oh my god, I'm rambling on again. At least the microphone is working today. The microphone, microphone, thousand. Even without a pop filter. I just wanted to say that the stock cap isn't black. It's dark brown. And I think it's honestly much nicer than most of the black butt plates I see. I also find it strange that someone actually bought this ugly thing with the more expensive wooden stock, because usually it's a black plastic stock, as I mentioned before. Up front, there's usually a piece of plastic around it, with a rear sight sitting on top that matches this incredibly high piece of plastic. Thank goodness someone has already removed that and hopefully burned it or disposed of it in some other way. Normally, there is a plastic piece like this around the front, with a rear sight on top that matches this incredibly high plastic piece. Thank goodness someone has already removed that and hopefully burned it or disposed of it in some other way. If you want to enjoy this thing in all its glory, really see how ugly it is, you should check out YouTube. There are two or three other videos, of course not as great as mine, but you can see what it looks like unchanged. And of course, there are also various pictures on Google. Up front, there's something that looks like a compensator or silencer, whatever you want to call it. And of course, there are also various pictures on Google. Up front, there's something that looks like a compensator or silencer, whatever you want to call it. It's not included as standard, either the previous owner bought it and had a different gun with him. But I know that it specifically belongs to this shotgun, or to other similar models from 2001. And he put that on, because he apparently has some kind of plastic cap for the thread when that hideous front sight is sitting on it. Let me show you what it looks like from the front. Yeah, it's completely hollow. Which means this thing isn't a compensator. It doesn't compensate for anything at all. You could call it a barrel weight, or you could say it's an extended cocking lever, because it's good for grabbing and cocking, but it also tends to rust easily. I've already overoiled this thing, so it tends to pick up a bit of surface rust as well. I had already mentioned this atrocity. I had already mentioned it. I had already mentioned it. I had already mentioned it. Like I said, just look somewhere, because wow. The Luger scope. The Luger scope, my goodness. The scope is aiming. When I first tried it, Everything was blurry, of course, because I have to unscrew the front part here first, and then the objective, no, what do we call it? The ocular, exactly. I had to unscrew the objective further until it was sharp at 10 meters, and then I had to secure it again with the locking ring here. And now it works well too, but it works well here as well. And now it works well too, but 
works well here too. So it's not like the old surface is scattering or anything. I've never seen a crosshair like that before. You can see the lower half and the upper half, 2001. So it's offset to the side. It's not a continuous thread. It's like it's offset to the side a bit. And I think it's also a bit offset in height. I just happened to have it right here. Yeah, in height too. It looks like even in height, it's off. That is fine since the white dot is this size through the scope. A slightly offset crosshair bothers German aesthetics, but it doesn't affect aiming much. Besides, this isn't a precision weapon. It's a good recreational sight. But honestly, it doesn't make that much of a difference when aiming. Besides, this isn't a precision weapon. It's, I would say, a well-functioning creational sight. Everything's fine. What else can I really say about it? Well, I think for the price I paid, $56, for the whole package in 2001, I would say that's perfectly fine. Of course, I hope that when I eventually sell it again at eGuard, I won't just get $56 for it, because I also had shipping costs on top of that. I would really like to get that out again. And I honestly think it's worth more. So when I see what's going on these days and then a gun with a scope, I just got lucky for the price because nobody knew about this thing with relatively few videos and the sympathies for Russia are also rather limited at the moment. Yeah, 2001. So that was the MP. Which isn't a submachine gun. And yeah, I would say we'll see the rest then. So thank you all once again for having the angelic patience and taking the time to come here just for me. And I wish you all the same things you wish for me. Until next August. The man says, I almost forgot. Says the man who has to turn off his camera all by himself every time, without any minions or a camera crew. So that had to happen. Thousand.